Have you ever wanted to learn more about your own body? There's a hell of a lot of stuff going on just underneath your skin. We've got dozens of organs, 206 bones, more than 600 muscles, and all the little bits that hold it together. If you study anatomy, there are thousands of structures that not only do you need to be able to locate, but you've also got to give them a name. And the language of anatomy is extensive. In fact, if you study anatomy, you will learn enough new words that you could learn French instead. <laughs> How overwhelming is that? <laughs> and to add on to that, it's confusing because anatomical terms are all Latin and Greek-based and you start to sound like you're reciting spells from Harry Potter. We've got orbicularis oculi, or perhaps you might prefer, honestly, Ronald, it's levator scapulae, not levator scapulae. <laughs> all I need is a wand. So how can we cut through the confusion and make this language of anatomy seem less daunting? Well, there are two tricks that I like to use. One is to break down the word into its component parts and relate that back to the structure. And the other is to tell a good story. So I'll give you an example of both, starting with gastrocnemius. Now, your gastrocnemius is the big, bulging muscle in the back of your calf. And we can break the word down into three parts. We've got gastro, knee, and meus. Now, gastro means belly. You're all here tonight at the Science Museum for the food and drink themed event. So I'm sure there's a few foodies in the audience who may have been to a gastro pub before. And if you have, you would have walked out with a belly bulging with food. And it does, it stands out. Bulging belly in the back of the knee. And knee, well, when gastrocnemius contracts, it flexes the knee. And the meus is a Harry Potter sounding flourish at the end. So we've got gastrocnemius, the belly of the knee. Now onto my favourite muscle, which is sartorius. Also happens to be the longest muscle in the body, and it stretches all the way from the knobbly bit at the front of your hip, down across your thigh, and onto the top of your shin. Now sartorius has got a good story to its name. You see, the Latin well, is sartor, and sartor means tailor. And when you contract sartorius, it allows you to cross your knee and form the position that tailors would have been in when they were sewing up their garments. And we use it today in modern English. If you describe someone as being sartorial, then you're saying that they're very well dressed and might even have a tailor. So I hope from these couple of examples, you can see that the language of anatomy and learning about what's under your skin doesn't need to be intimidating and overwhelming. Think of the language less like the trappings of a J.K. Rowling novel and more of a fun foray into the English language. Thank you for listening, and may I finish by saying that you are all looking very sartorial this evening. <laughs>